thunder's not close yet, but it's coming. This is why this place is so green. Tremendous amount of rain. I'm out to look at blackberries, but I thought we'd listen to sounds of nature. Now, they've already eaten, but they're always ready for more. Sounds of fish feeding. Now, some blackberries. These are kiwa. Look at the fruit on those. Anyway, they're running down and one day they're going to hopefully take over those woods. They're getting in there pretty good. See, let's look at these prime gen. Now, they're going to get big. They're a little later. But then, look, here's kiwa that are coming their way. And every berry got a lot of little beads. Where a lot of these prime jans, see there's only a few beads. That fruit will never amount to anything. Where this will be a big succulent berry. These prime jans may end up going, but look how these kiwa, they come in and they're just beautiful. Yeah, moving into those woods. Look at these cannas. I just love cannas. And uh, I have whew, four canna beds. Look at this one. It's coming up. They're all over. But this is the thornless Navajo. See? They're just coming along, and I have good hopes for them. Last year they were planted in the spring, so this is their first proper year. But look at that. Look at that guy. <laughs> anyway, good. He's a little helper. Look a honeybee. Just wonderful. And uh, then on this side is the thorny berries. Again, prime jam here. Ouch. And it is doing good. So maybe the problem with the prime gen on that side is that just it's in an unfortunate spot. But then, all this backside is these keels. And they get huge, just massive berries. Flavor's not great. But it's good. It's blackberry. See? Just berries and berries. I just can't imagine how this amount of leaves can support this amount of berries. But it will. Look at this. Cascading berries. And then the front. All oh, those thornless berries. And there's a grape, and it's covered in grapes. Just excellent. I've been eating the last of my frozen berries. I've been making berry cobblers. Flora, what do you think? Look at that whale. I get like tail. The other dogs are somewhere, but anyway, here's this apricot, some roses, and then the grapes. Look at them go. They are just getting to where they'll be covering the building. And look, they're just furry with grapes. Unfortunately, these are nice grapes, and the red-headed woodpeckers and the cardinals actually line up to eat them. One by one, they will come and they will take a grape, pluck it, and fly off with it. Then the next one comes. I'm excited about that one, yellow raspberry. But grapes. Grapes and grapes, calamander. And here's the grapes again. By fall, they will really be lovely leafing out, getting dark. But anyway, 
plum, quince, mulberry, asparagus bed, crab apple, loquat, calamander. This is, that's a raspberry developed in Mississippi for Mississippi. I have great hopes for it. Just planted this spring. Now this is an amazing canna lily bed. Just get going, but look, the can the worms are already after it. Uh-oh, these guys, they roll the leaf up and eat it. Anyway, <sighs> apricot, plucot down there, satsuma, plum, Myers, lemon. It's just all so green. The bananas are just starting to leaf. Look, it's putting its first stock out. Oh, I just did the thing on the berries, but look, this is three days of rain. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Look, at here's another bed of cannas. Four in all. They're my favorite flower. Now this rose of Sharon, this is from a little twig. You break off one of these, see? Stick it in the ground. Get a rose of Sharon. Let's come down here. I've got these. These are my bearded iris. Planted 15 of them, as far as I can tell. 11 of them made. And look, the calamander made it through the winter. They're not a cold hardy plant. These guys are trying to take over. I'm going to have to maybe take some of him out. Nice ground cover, but see bearded iris. They say bearded iris won't do well here, but I'm going to find out. We know the regular iris do. In fact, we know all kinds of iris do here. I've got Japanese Irish and Dutch Irish and everything was beautiful. And by the way, that squeaking you hear, that's a tree frog being eaten by that snake. This is in my can of bed. It'll go fairly quick. Poor little guy. There's a garter snake and they hunt the ponds. It will go fast. Weasel, the dogs all want to know what that noise is. And the snake's maneuvering to get a better grip. I, uh, you can see he's not a real small snake. Now if he was a cottonmouth moccasin, I'd have to kill him. I kill about six a year of them. But he's your harmless garter snake. This bit of woods is so full of frogs. At night it sounds like a mad factory working here with all the those green tree frogs belting out and the gray tree frogs and the narrow mouth toads sound just like sheep. The leopard frogs, the chorus frogs, the cricket frogs, and the huge bullfrogs. Then all around is the circadias just singing this locust that spent three to 17 years underground sucking sap from tree roots and then emerge as a giant flying circadia for a very quick period of, of terrestrial life and then lay their eggs and are gone but in the meantime they sing. The frog will soon be gone. I'll turn this off. 